time is now We haven't got all night Before cold reasons banging on your door now Every breath is Check out this wall of vinyl all right, we are at Tiger Spice Studios, getting ready for the show tonight with Yoav. We're gonna just check out what's going on in the studio. Come with me. Little kitchen. This is our CPH Live control room. This is Maunus. How's it going? I'm just pushing buttons here. <laughs> so let's go into the control room. Check out this space. Exactly. Check out this console. All right, I'm here with Morn from Tiger Spice Studios. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks Welcome. for having us. Thanks. Thank you. But tell me about how long you've been here. And your... I've been here for about uh, six years now. I, think. Yes. I like to think of it as sort of a boutique studio, like a boutique hotel. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's not huge. Yeah. You can't have a full uh, classic orchestra in there, but I can fit a five-piece rock band or six-piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it's just nice selected items, old good sounding microphones and new as well. Uh, also the outboard equipment. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to think it's a very nice selection. Yeah, it looks good to me. And the console that you asked about is, uh, it's a Neve, uh, designed in 1978. Mm -hmm. And I think it was finished, they were finished building this in uh, 81 or something. It was ordered by the BBC in London and then it was there for some years and then it crossed uh, the Atlantic Ocean and was used for recording uh, in an American studio and then I bought it and now it's right. crossed the <laughs> ocean again and uh, it's back and it sounds so great. Or well, I imagine having quite a journey like across the ocean twice might yeah. <laughs> take, take a toll on an old console. It's like good uh, rum or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it sounds amazing and it's uh, just a joy to work on. So. Okay, thanks so much. Tiger Spice Studios, we're here with Yoav. Enjoy the show. CPH Live Sessions. Hello and welcome to CPH Live Sessions. We're here live tonight from Tiger Spice Studios in Copenhagen. Very pleased to welcome all the way from South Africa, Yoav. Hello. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's great to be here. Excellent. We're going to hear some music from his new album called Multiverse. And we're going to have a little chat later. And it's going to be a grand old time. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to just let you take it away if that's cool. Okay. Here's Yoav, everybody. Thanks.
across your lips, sweet touch our fingertips, electric sparks ignited into eclipse. The trouble I, I'm dying to let go what I know, what I know, what I know. I'm not afraid, I'm ready for the shout, I'm not afraid. Turning inside out The isolation Caught up in our day in, day out
it was before Watch the rise and fall Under the black moon Sell it to yourself Acquaintance of accomplices Under the black moon
rise together follow from the hollow you've been tied in tongue your bite in no more in a minute there's no name matching nation When you dive in to the ocean, pure emotion. gonna let you fall on your way home Oh, the little lost hits Cheating chance to survive Enter each one at your own pace Stumbling through space and time And don't forget that You're a lion No more hiding from the song In the darkness Seeds of no Gonna let you fall on 
Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Whew. How are you feeling? Oh, head spinning. It's all good. It's like, uh, as I was saying earlier, it's like a new spaceship that I don't quite know how to drive, but um, but it's getting there. Yeah, maybe you need some lessons. Maybe that's what this is today. Yeah, this is my first lesson. <laughs> yeah, you got a lot going on here. Um, so this is much more elaborate than your normal setup, is that right? Yeah, it was always a little tricky, but um, the new music that we made was um, so multi-layered and dimensional that uh, there was no way. I, I was either going to go with backing tracks, and that's just a cop-out, or, or, or unplugged. And so, um, yeah, I've sat for about six, nine months with a Guitar Wiz tech guy, and uh, we, we've come up with this, and I, I can play most of my stuff now. That's and, exciting. Um, and it's, uh, I can do a thousand times more than I ever thought I'd be able to do with a guitar. So. Very cool. Yeah, you have a lot of stuff here that uh, I've never really seen before. It looks like you have some custom software and everything too. It's the software really that makes it so I can play bass. You know, oh, I'm playing bass here uh, in case people are wondering. Yeah, and, so uh, I mean, uh, I was curious. It looks like everything is happening live. You're not really triggering much. You're, you're playing samples with your feet when you're playing the bass. You're looping the guitar. Yeah, it's 100% live, yeah. Okay. So um, so it's tricksy. Uh, and some of the songs are tricky. Um, and then you want to perform and be in the song and say the words. So, um, yeah. But I must say, I'm enjoying it so much. I'm playing so many hours a day. Just um, And find, you know, and there's like a... Where has it gone? Oh, that's where it's gone. Yeah, like that and if I want bass I've got and I've got oh, just mad sounds that I can do on the guitar now you know synthesizers cool. nice so we just heard four tracks from your new album Multiverse yeah, yeah. Uh, coming out tomorrow I believe so very cool I mean. um, so I mean we'll be able to see that on all the streaming services. Are yeah. you doing physical releases too or Yeah, we have vinyl and we have CDs. Uh I think it depends what country. Um certain countries will and certain countries won't. I mean you'll be able to get it online anyway. I'm mm -hmm. very proud of the vinyl. It looks super cool. And um yeah, all the streaming services and this has been a real labor. It's been you know, people are like, wow, you took a long break before you put this record out. And I'm like, I was actually working on this record the whole time, pretty much. So okay. was a, when was it your last tour? Um, I had a, an EP that came out in the end of 2014. And we did a tour to support that, like 2014, 2015, I feel like. And then, yeah, since then, um, I pretty much got home that summer and started teaching myself some software, some Ableton. And that became Sketches and... I, w I went to Ibiza to jam with a DJ friend of mine and missed my flight back and stayed for two as, years, as, as you do, yeah. <laughs> and I stayed for two years and made the album there. Uh, and this, the sketches I'd been uh, working on the computer ended up being being the, the spine of the record. Cool. Um, so you're here in Copenhagen, you're doing a couple shows this weekend. Yeah, super, super lo-fi, um, intimate, just uh, get the little word of mouth thing going before I'm fully ready to take this uh, spaceship out on the road. Okay, so it's sort of some warm-up shows and then yeah. a bigger tour a bit later. Um, I think it's February, March we're talking about doing um, Eastern Europe, Western Europe, and, uh, and then we'll see from there. Great. And so you've been to Copenhagen a few times. Yeah. What's your Danish connection? Well, it was, uh, this album is kind of a reset for me. And um, my first record, Charmed and Strange, uh, was popular in a few different countries, like five or six totally random disconnected places. And um, the first place to discover it was, um, was here in uh, Denmark. And um, I came and played it, a couple of songs live on a radio show and record went to number one and sold out big shows. And that, that was kind of the start of all the fun and games. Cool. But, um, so it's it's kind of been my uh, um, second musical home in a way. So okay. it felt good to start out here. Great. Home is South Africa? In a way. I, I grew up there. Um, I then lived in New York a long time. I lived in London a long time. And the last 10 years, I've lived in maybe 15, 20 different cities. Uh, but I, I always come back for summertime to Cape Town. Okay. And so you tour a lot. I'm curious, what's your favorite thing about being on the road? 
Um, it kind of depends where and when. Like, uh, mm. I'm not too super excited about playing in uh, February in Northern Europe because mm. that's going to be cold. Yeah. But um, it, it's certain tours that have just been memorable. There was a there was a European tour we did in March and April, and spring was coming, and we were driving across Europe, and that was great. And um, I would say just meeting people in a way, coming into somewhere brand new as a total stranger, and um, meeting really awesome people right off the bat. Whereas if I lived there, it would take months, if ever, to meet these kinds of people and, mm -hmm. and I'm able to, I have a wonderful network of friends all over the world now from, from doing this. Mm -hmm. Great. And when you tour, is it a pretty small operation? I mean, you play pretty much all your shows solo. Solo. So and I, yeah. Are you two, three people on the road or is it three like, max? Yeah. yeah. Two of uh, my trusty sound guy on the road with me, mm -hmm. long suffering. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, I would love to have a guitar tech or something now that I have all these toys, but uh, we'll see. I, I might just have to learn to use them better. Yeah, you need like an electronics tech. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, you got him good. on the other end of the phone. Hey, I know I was calling him today. <laughs> help sort things out. Um, so maybe we'll let you play a few more tracks. You have, uh, I mean, I imagine you've sort of reworked your old material for yeah. this new setup that must have been quite a i've had to do that so i i'm gonna play one of my old songs in the in the old way uh, and i'm gonna play a couple of old songs in the new way but yeah i've had to redo everything and um yeah it's been it's been a process is that a, the kind of process that you enjoy doing or is that a little bit tedious for you a little tedious the reworking of the new stuff um but it sounds so much better and you know now i've got uh, the real hi-hats i can do things with the kick drum that i can do and um yeah so so it is kind of cool and i and i'm able to remix myself on the fly which which is really interesting whereas before i was mm -hmm. very limited and i had to be very clever about how i used these things mm -hmm. and i mean i see you dancing a lot with your feet and is there is there like potential that you're gonna miss something that's oh, gonna I, throw I, it all I off. did I did I missed a few things but um, part of the trick is uh, kind of when you make a mistake being able to hear that you just made a mistake and be erasing it while you keep on playing so people don't really know but okay, um, so you're, the, the bass is tricky I'm still learning to play bass at the same time as everything and that's yeah. why I'm sitting down normally I stand up but yeah, I'm, I'm okay. not there yet all right well, it's very cool. Um, I think I'll just let you play some more tracks because uh, it's quite mesmerizing. Grand. So uh, let's hear some more music. Okay. Thanks. Let's see how we go. Let's find a sound.
feel, I feel we lost our way, but it's okay. We'll make it back when the time arrives. And if you close the door, just leave a crack. I know you know we'll make it back when the time arrives. No. I'll be by your side. I wait the day for some kind sign that I'll obey, but I'm not doing fine. Living in my skin without till to get in. Living in my until the night. She. Crash over me, my dopamine, until the door. She crash over me, my dopamine, until the night. She crash over me, my dopamine, until the door. She crash over me, my dopamine.
adore World of dreams and all the sweet things I adore But once I'm in So hard to find My way back out again My body is shaking to the core When I feel I can't take it anymore I close my eyes I hear her say we all are dancing anyway We all
This town gets lonely after midnight And when the animal hunger runs deep I know I'm never gonna get to sleep Well, some people claim I know, I know The deepest, darkest place to go You never get out once they let you in Once they let you in, you've been nothing but a club team. What you say to be bad, to be one of the beautiful, such a beautiful face, such a beautiful girl. And one thing's for sure, one thing's for certain, that if you get behind the velvet curtain, you'll see. That nothing's as sweet as it looks on my TV You need a cold soul of concrete here You gotta feel without pity You need a cold soul of concrete here Just like the soul, the soul of the city What would you say to me? Just from the corner, he waits for her to stumble. He knows that he's the king, the king of the cardboard jungle. He knows he can afford what appears to enslave her, but he's got a hunger for the sweetest of babies. Just another club. What would you say to be paid to be one of the beautiful? Such a beautiful face. Such a beautiful girl. What would you say to be paid to be one of the beautiful? Such a beautiful
right. Shoo. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. You look Thank a little... You. Uh, Relieved. <laughs> <laughs> feels good? Sounds good? Yeah. For the most part, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm I mean, happy with feels, the new feels good was a question. Sounds good was a statement. So. Good. Okay. Um, so those were old tracks um, from previous albums, right? Those were from previous records, yeah. That's kind of Very a, cool. a mishmash. Yeah, with your new setup. Very cool. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell me what's your earliest musical memory that, that you can think of? Um, my mom was an opera singer uh, and um, my dad was a big classical music fan. So I kind of remember Beethoven's Fifth. He played me Beethoven's Fifth when I was super young. I was into it. Okay. It doesn't really get much better than that. Presumably you had a lot of music in the womb as well then. Probably, but I don't quite recall that so well. Okay. Do you have any um, singing background too? Did you Were you ever on the opera train? I had some classical uh, vocal lessons, but no, my, my whole musical direction was in um, sort of rebellion against all of that. I didn't want to be a classical player. Um yeah, my dad was like very hardcore about not having pop music in the house, and but that made it that much more like appealing to me. Okay, I'm that kind of guy. Were you like um, like conservatory piano lessons as a child, or uh... they tried piano, and then um, I wasn't really taken to that. So then they had me do this special test where you answered musical questions, and um, they decide what instrument would be best for you. And they said stringed instrument particularly the guitar. So then my parents said, okay, you can play the cello. <laughs> so then I had that for a couple of years. And, um, and then only after that, I started playing guitar on my own and kind of taught myself. And um, okay, yeah, but it's good to have the grounding, you know, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, of course. So do you ever pick up a cello these days? No, I was never much good. I sounded like I was killing some kind of waterfowl bird. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole other thing. You can't stay in tune in it and uh, I don't mm-hmm. know, difficult. And so once you sort of became a guitarist, was it always acoustic or did you dabble in, in the Jimi Hendrix kind of thing too? Yeah, as a teenager, I wanted to look cool with an electric guitar. And, and then, um, yeah, I, I, mean, I play electric and do the odd solo, but um, yeah, it was later really bringing in percussion and other things and I just can do much more on an acoustic guitar. Mm-hmm. Cool. So you must have been writing songs at a young age too, and just yeah. always experimenting poetry and songs. And I was this kind of a melancholy teenager as well. And there's reading a lot, a lot, and listening to tons of music. Um, did you have a goth phase? Yeah, there was. There was a goth. I never quite did the dress, but I went to the the places. There were two clubs um, when I was growing up. When I was like mm-hmm. thirteen, fourteen, where, and they let me in because they were goth clubs. And um, <laughs> That's the first place I heard the Pixies. It's the first place I heard the Chili Peppers and Rage Against the Machine and uh, Joy Division and yeah, Cure and all of that was um, was from going to those places and hanging out with uh, friends of mine in bands that were much older and yeah, cool. musical education. Did you ever were you ever like able to play in a band with with older kids too? And did you start your own band when you were a kid? Yeah, I, I played in a band with much older kids. Um, they let me in the band because I had a PA system. Um, I was really quite dorky compared <coughs> to the other dudes. And um, <laughs> and they were much older. And uh, yeah, they, it was actually quite a wild time. And uh, that was my one of my few rock band experiences. Yeah. Was that like, were you, did you have it in your mind? You're like, I think if I buy a PA, then I'll be able to join any band because no, <laughs> no, but I definitely, u- we had one, I think, for my sister's boyfriend who had played guitar and we had it sitting in the house, but I definitely used it as leverage. And, and I, I had a rehearsal room in the house as well, so oh, yeah, okay. two, two good reasons to have me in the band. Yeah, of course. You're like the bass player and drummer, the coveted, uh, you know, m- members of the band that are always hard to find. Yeah, it's like, yeah. who has a PA, who has a rehearsal space? Exactly. <laughs> no, that was, that was it. I had, a, I had a good rhythm section, and then other guys in my school were trying to steal my rhythm section from me because they couldn't find one. Okay. But yeah. No, I'm glad I don't play in a band anymore, actually. Yeah. I, I quite like um, freedom. Something nice about choosing your own rehearsal schedules and not worrying about uh, anyone else's, you know, Wednesday night football, whatever it is. There's that. But um, yeah, also with this new approach, I, I've, in the recent years, a lot of my favorite musical experience have been um, DJ, watching DJs and, and how they flow with um, 
with music and that would be it's not impossible with the band but much more difficult and mm-hmm. that's kind of where I want to take this now is that kind of what brought you to Ibiza for that uh, holiday turned two year adventure uh, I, I went to jam with a DJ producer friend of mine and um, we were talking about doing something like down tempo but with electronica and uh, the side of the island we were living on is not the typical if if you haven't been then you kind of expect it to only be the oy oy Ibiza you know hardcore Tourist parties, partying yeah, yeah. No, no, none of that okay it was more like hippies and locals uh, drum circles uh, very hippie actually but um, super nice for a year or two are you a hippie? I don't know you asked me if I'm goth or hippie I, I'd <laughs> like to think uh, I've had my phases and um, I dip into all kinds of uh, I have many kinds of friends and circles and Mm-hmm. I'm really fit into one. Okay, good answer. Good answer. Um, I think maybe we can wrap this up. Do you have another track you want to play? Um, you have anything no, else prepared? Well, yeah. I mean, no, I think that's good. Yeah, this I mean, been long. Yeah, that was a, a lot of work. So yeah, yeah. No, I'm feeling good. I'm ready to chill out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I was going to do that. The fourth song actually um, was going to be my encore, and then I played it fourth. So all the new songs are in one kind of area okay cool um well thank you so much it's been lovely to have you great to meet you thank you very much i hope you enjoy the rest of your time in copenhagen uh, certainly and will. look forward to seeing you again in the winter splendid hopefully it won't be uh such a dreary scandinavian winter but uh we'll see yeah we'll see um thanks so much we're at tiger spice studios in copenhagen uh cph live sessions you've been listening to yoav Go check out his album, Multiverse, comes out tomorrow. Go see him on tour. And uh, I'm going to say later. Thanks so much. Thank you.